Scott Hassler continued the development of the dressage horse by showing how to teach the PF and dressage from the ground. First of all, there are basically two ways to start the, let's say, collected work for PF. One way is in hand, which we want to show today, and the other is under the rider. And I'd like to say that it's usually whatever's best for that horse. I want the horse to have freedom without restriction. Yeah. And it just gives the horse a, a general guideline to be able to do this work. Most importantly for me is not to restrict the walk. So the first step is just to teach the horse how to move the leg from what you want. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, it's fine. What I really like so far, and I'm learning about her energy, her sensitivities right now, when you have a new horse. She reacts very well from the whip. And again, I want you to notice as I go out this, throughout this sequence, I'm going to try my hardest not to take too much contact and not to hit with the whip hard. Good. Uh, and there I quickened the left hind, right hind, left hind, just like PF would be. Good, good, easy. That she doesn't build tension, I'm going to ask for a rein back so she doesn't have a program. Good. It also tells me if my horse wants to bolt through me, just to check those things. Again, stay ahead of a problem. Check on things. As a developing right now, this was just nice. I allowed the horse to move forward. I didn't hit her hard with the whip. It was a communicating aid. I didn't have to correct her. She gave me enough energy for what I was asking for. Now a little bit half halt in the walk, and turn, and come. Ah, oh. There I did not hit her with the whip for more energy. I hope you all could see that. I got a lot more energy. I got her in front of my leg without hitting her with the whip. And then I don't make pee off right away. The point is I want her in front of my leg. And I don't want to use that tension to come to pee off. I want the aid to respond properly. Like that. Good. And this is what I want. I want her on call. I try to turn that on call. When I ask, I get it right away. A few steps and done. This communication. Be versatile with the horse. Really take them as an individual and train them in that manner when you're beginning. Christoph Hess then used a four-year-old American warm blood gelding to emphasize the basics of good rhythm and impulsion in the collected gates. This is, uh, from my point of view, a super walk. Is this, it's not an extreme super walk, but it's really a marching walk, absolutely clear in rhythm but not hurrying, which is important, and very good coming from the shoulder, very good over-tracking, and the most important thing is 100% clear in rhythm, and important is it's regular, you see on the curve line in the corners, and on the long lines, and which is very good, the riders able to ride this horse with the driving aids. Oh. We start trot work, rising trot. This horse is a type, it could be a show jumping horse as well. Therefore you see a good horse normally has a potential in the very beginning for all disciplines. You see the horse is stretching uh, the neck, is seeking the beaks, uh, the bit, the horse is in front of the driving aids. And important is that the horse in canter has the, has the possibility to have an absolutely clear three beat rhythm. And I want to point out, I said impulsion we have to have not only in the extensions or in the medium gates, but in the uh, collective gates as well. Oh, the question is how good the impulsion is. How good the impulsion is. Only collection without 
impulsion is more or less having a dead horse. You don't see a difference between the canter on the left hand and the canter of the right hand. And Ellie is a very good student uh, because I said, think on the left hand a little bit more forward. She is now riding him a little bit more forward. She thinks a little bit more in the direction between working and medium canter so that the horse is able to bring uh, the hind legs truly under the point of gravity. It's very important to open the back, to open the back, to stretch the back so that the horse is able uh, to use the whole body. The horse is 100% supple. The horse has a wonderful elasticity, nicht? a wonderful uphill movement, nicht? and there's a nice confidence and a true harmony between horse and rider. The, and then collection, collect the horse. Note the, put your leg a little bit more in front and kick him a little bit. Good, yeah, okay. Make him a little bit more quick, a little bit more quick when, when, she, um, um, when she collected the horse because the horse has the problem in the flying change. He's a little bit late, or not a little bit, he's late behind sometimes. And therefore it's important that the uh, uh, canter, the basic work in canter is, um, is really good. The horse has to be a little bit more active from behind. Yeah, kick him a little bit. Okay. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. He has a wonderful temperament, this horse. Yeah. Okay, it's good. Transition to walk, please. Yeah. Ellie, pass auf deinen Schenkel auf, nicht so weit zurück den Schenkel. Oh, once more. A little bit uh, better preparation. Try to uh, have the horse before the transition a little bit more on uh, the hind legs. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, and then walk, clear walk. This horse should be a little bit more durchlässig, more supple in the transition. Okay, probably another line, he knows it, and now, yeah, well done. Not super from behind, but just enough. And the young horse has to learn that the flying change starts from behind. Therefore, it's so important when you start from walk to canter, the horse has to start from behind and not with the front legs and then with the hind legs. Now we want to see a flying change from right to left canter. Ah, it's better, nicht? you see, it's a little bit powerful when, he, when the canter starts. Yeah, the late behind. Yeah, well done. Did you see it? <laughs>